Hi there! Time for three SAT practice questions with me, Anne-Marie. We're with the heart of algebra for the SAT, so let's dive in and see what's the first systems of equations question I need to solve today. Hmm, page 68, question number one. Let's see what we've got. Uh, there we go, okay. Question number one. If AB is the solution to the system of equations shown above and A and B are integers, then what is the value of A plus B? All right, so AB is an ordered pair on this coordinate plane and it's telling me that a and b are integers so i don't have to worry about it being just like the teensiest decimal place off of a perfect point thank you problem um, and i just need to find that point and then add the x and y values together so oh and i need to be careful because this coordinate plane is not uh, labeled as each box is one so i need to keep that in mind so this is negative 10 um, two up from that is going to be, this is a negative six y value, and then also a negative six x value. So if I add those together, I'll get negative 12, which is a. And I'm looking at b and going, that is totally a trap answer for people who didn't read their coordinate plane carefully, because if I thought they were both negative 3, that's what I would have gotten. Tricky SAT. All right, let's do another one. Uh, page 70, question number 11. So just the next page. Uh, at a certain movie theater, there are 16 rows, and each row has either 20 or 24 seats. If the total number of seats in all 16 rows is 348, how many rows have 24 seats? All right. Gotta love system of equation word problems. So, okay. If um, x equals rows with 20 seats and y equals rows with 24 seats. Then I've got two equations here. x plus y, the number of rows, um, is equal to 16. And then I've got the total number of seats. So 20 x, because x is the number of rows with 20 seats, times 20 will give me the total number of seats, plus the same thing with y, 24y equals altogether 348. And then I get to solve for the system of equations. And do I want to do substitution or combination? I like combination better, so I'm going to do it that way, which means I need to multiply this entire equation by, let's see, I want to find the number of rows with 24 seats, which means I want to isolate y and get rid of x. So I'm going to multiply that entire first equation by 20. And what's 16 times 20? 16 times 20, 320. I should have been able to do that in my head. All right. Um, so then I've got 20x plus 20y equals 320. And I'm going to subtract these two equations, which means these guys are going to cancel out. Uh, that's going to become negative. That's going to become negative. So this is 4y. Um, and subtract this, I'll get 28. So y equals 7. Now, that's answer choice A. And I can check my work if I just plug this right back in and see if it still fits. Um, I can do then x would equal 9. Um, so if I do 20 times 9 plus 24 times 7, do I get 348? So 20 times 9 is going to be 180. 24 times 7 
is 168 plus 180 does in fact give me 348. So this totally works and seven is my answer. Awesome. All right, let's try one more. Uh, page 69, flipping back, number six. If the system of linear equations above has no solution and A is a constant, then what is the value of A? All right. So I need to find A is the coefficient of x. Um, and I think the most efficient way to find this is going to be putting both of these into slope-intercept form. Because as it is, my y's don't match up. So I need to get my numbers to match up in order to figure out what a is. So I'm going to put these both in slope-intercept form and see what I get. So for the first one, I've got 1 half x minus 2 thirds y equals 7. So if I move my x over, I get negative 2 thirds y <laughs> equals negative 1 half x plus 7. And then I multiply both sides by negative 3 halves and get, so these guys will cancel each other out. And I'll just have y. Negative 3 halves will give me 3 fourths x um, plus minus 21 halves, which isn't really the part that I care about. I want to know about that number in front of the x. So let's look at the other one. ax minus 8y equals 1. So then, again, moving things over, negative 8y equals negative ax plus 1. And then I need to divide everything by negative 8. So this gives me y equals uh, ax over 8 minus 1 8. Which, again, don't care so much about that, but this a over 8 has to be equal to 3 fourths. So if I set these equal to each other, then I know, OK, this is multiplied by 2. So I just do the same thing on top and get a equals 6, which is answer choice D. Awesome. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one.